With the Bundesliga title secured in our first season at RB Leipzig, there was still work to be done in Germany. The DFB Bacau was our main focus this season, along with a European trophy. What can we achieve in season three of the Glory Hunter? Now, in the summer transfer window, we had to sell a few players, players who didn't play in the last season, just to get some funds in. We did make 96 million through player sales. Our biggest one out was Benjamin Hendricks, who left to go to Chelsea for 43 million. It was a clause in his contract. Chelsea came in with it. It was a left back slash right back. Had a really good season last year. He's gone to Chelsea. Also gone for 20 million to Bournemouth at Angelino. Andre Silva goes to Brighton for 15. Dodo goes to Leicester. Yusuf Paulson goes to Stuttgart. 17 players leave in the end. And we bring a total of eight players into the side. First one went up a 7.5 million sign in from River Plate. Nicholas Romero, 21 year old defender. He's been injured since he got here. So, yeah. Do that bear out of mind, but he has got some great potential. I said we need another goalkeeper, and this is who we brought in. Jasper Torgensen, 21 years old, a very good goalkeeper. Quite cheap as well, £6 million. Right took one of our players, so we take one of theirs. A Valentin Barco, left back. Signed for a fee of £23.5 million, a bit of a bargain. And we know what this kid can turn into, so a decent left back for a few years. Even though we won the Bundesliga last year, I do think... We need some quality on the wings. But the first player I brought in was Newington from Shakhtar. Cost 13.25 million. And he could be an absolute bargain. He's valued at 45 to 61. He's 20 years old, a Brazilian. Newington is now one of our main wingers. To go alongside our main signing. For a fee of 53 million. Luis Diaz has left Liverpool and has joined RB Leipzig. What a signing this is. It just shows real intention from the club as well. His technicals are fantastic. His mentals are great. His physicality as well. Unbelievable. They let him down a little bit on strength, but I, think, I do think he's quite stronger than a 10. One of our main key players. Him assisting Cisco could be fantastic. And to add more depth to our defensive midfield, we signed... David Patezzi for fee of 28.5 million from Inter Milan. And he looked absolutely solid as well. 25 years old, will be at the club for a few years. We also brought two loanees in from the Premier League. Tino Livermento from Newcastle as cover for our right and left back. And also Claudio Echeverri from Manchester City. A wonder kid. Can play along the top four. We need it for depth due to injuries. And one of our main injuries is Sesco. He's broken his foot in pre-season. He is out for another couple of months. We're sticking with a 4-2-4 formation. If I do pick without restrictions, our best 11, this is what the side looks like. If Steve keeps putting in Peter Gullessi, so I'm going to put in Van der Voort as our main one. I think he will be a very good goalkeeper with uh, Cordenson behind him. It's a very strong team. Is it good enough to win? DFB Bacal, maybe challenge for the Champions League. Fixtures, and we've had an okay start to the season. Losing the Super Cup 3-1 to FC Bayern. No biggie, no biggie. Smashing Huff in the DFB Bacal first round, 15-0. In the Bundesliga, we are undefeated. A 4-1 win over Stuttgart, a 3-1 win over Wolfsburg, and a 2-1 win over Frankfurt. It's a great start to the season. We're second in the Bundesliga, but we're not interested in the Bundesliga, really. We're after the DFB Pokal. Our Champions League teams have been drawn. We have a very difficult games against Man City, Chelsea, Juventus, but also games where we should be picking up points, and we should, in theory, go through. The main aim for season three is a DFB Pokal. Can we go on and win it? If we win the Bundesliga again, that's fantastic. Even if we win the Champions League, it would be a fantastic season. It's another trophy ticked off the list right here we go then season three let's see what we can do in september we started off with a doozy a nice 3-0 win against marseille in the champions league first game david fatizi opening the scoring with an unbelievable strike from the corner of the area before newington scores from the edge of the six yard box after a mistake at the back for marseille and Balbadini's own goal secured all three points late on. Next up in the Bundesliga was Mainz, 
We ran right and won 5 1. Lewis Diaz opening the score in the 19th minute with a great finish at the back post. Before David Rum made it 2 0, and five minutes later, with a strike just outside the six yard box. Timo Werner made it 3. After some great work outside the box from Luis Diaz, Rama the cross, Verna in the area and gets his head to it. That was a Viper get one back on 53 minutes with a little bit of hope for Mines, but it wasn't enough. David Fatiz in the 61st minute, scoring a tap in, let's be honest, to make it 4 1. And then Nguyen turned in the 85th minute, wrapping the scoring up, meaning we win 5 1. The Bundesliga at the start of the season, us and Bayern Munich both have 18 points yet to taste defeat. October, and it was a battle at the bridge, coming behind to win 3-2 against Chelsea. Chelsea got the score underway with Kilcoy in the 8th minute. Some good work down the left-hand side. Three minutes later, and Cuckoo gets onto the ball to make it. 2 0 with 11 minutes played, and we are in absolute danger. But we pull one back in the 70th minute of David Fortizi with a goal. Take a little deflection, but we don't matter. 83rd minute, and Pavilla gets our equaliser after a cross comes in from Simacan. But then in the 93rd minute, Luis Diaz steps up with a free kick to put it in the top corner. Our first real test in the Bundesliga came against Bayern Munich and we whitewashed them 3 0. Musiala getting the score and underway for Bayern Munich in the 15th minute. Before Appender in the 39th minute getting the equaliser after a mistake at the back for Bayern Munich. Same as last season. Just on the mark, Timo Werner, who's had an unbelievable start to the season, gets on the score sheet to make it 2 1. But then in the 92nd minute, Luis Diaz steps up to give us all three points. In the second round of the DFB Bacal, we come away with a 3 1 win over Verba Brainham. Claudio in the 12th minute getting the scoring underway before a Ajorke equaliser for Verba Brainham in the 52nd minute started getting us thinking. But with 15 to go, Cuncho Hernandez. Steps up and puts us 2-1 up. We're Verba Brain looking for that equaliser. We push forward. And a goal from Nicholas Seward in the 88th minute breaks the Verba Brain hearts. And we progress into the third round. In the Bundesliga, we are still top of the league. Undefeated on 27 points. Dortmund are now second after Bayern Munich dropped. In November, we tasted our first defeat. Away to Bayer Leverkusen after Benjamin Sesco from the penalty spot put us up 1-0 on the stroke of half time. Edmund Tasoba with a 56th minute equaliser before a Florian Wirtz 69th, that's a naughty number, goal put our undefeated record at shame. Back in the Champions League we took a one all draw against Milan. Luis Diaz in the 48th minute giving us hope that we can pick up three points but in the 90th minute, Giancarlo Simic, with a strike from outside the box, top corner, made sure we shared the points. And in the Bundesliga, we are now seven points clear. Our undefeated record has gone, but Bayern Munich are definitely flopping. In December, we had a third round tie in the DFB Pokal against Regenberg. Coming away with a 5-1 onslaught. Claudio getting the score and underway in the 23rd minute with a simple tap-in. And then on the 44th minute, just before half-time, we make it to Fusesco with a very similar goal to the first. Just after half-time in the 48th minute, Newington gets on the score sheet with a decent corner set-piece. Before Sheriff Suman gets one back for Regensburg. Before Benjamin Sesco in the 78th minute gets himself a brace with a great finish from the penalty area. A little chip over the keeper. And then the 85th minute, Timo Werner 
wraps up the scoring and we progress into the next round of a DFB Bacal. Manchester City came to the Red Bull Arena in the Champions League and we finished with a 3 all draw. Daniel Armour with the goal in the 6th minute gave Man City fans all hope they're going to win this one. But then in the 19th minute, Pavadis gets an equaliser. Erden Haaland, he was there, of course he was. Of course, he's on the score sheet in the 20th minute. But we pull up a goal back in the 33rd minute with Luis Diaz. With a great strike at, in the edge of the box. We thought we'd win it in the 76th minute when Pavlidis did this. But it wasn't to be in the 79th minute. Erlen Haaland came up with another goal for Man City and the points were shared. In the Bundesliga, we got a surprise opposition. Frankfurt, they're pushing us. In January, we nearly had the comeback of all comebacks, losing 3-2 to Dortmund. Adeyemi in the fourth minute, putting the ball in the back of the net, and then eight minutes later, a mistake at the back from our back four cost us, and Adeyemi was there again to make it 2-0 after 12 minutes. We're still in the first half, and Julian Brandt made it 3-0 to Dortmund, and... This game was out of luck, but with 10 minutes to go, Valentin Barco come to alive with a great shot from outside the box, less than in the bottom corner. And in the 90th minute, Luis Diaz gets on the score, thinking, here we go, can we push for one more to get the equaliser? I'm afraid we couldn't. In the Champions League, our hearts were broken with a 96th minute equaliser. We scored in the 33rd minute with Pelevidis. But then, in the 96th minute, Weston McKenney, yep, he used to play for Leeds, turned up and got all the points was shed. There was a surprise defeat to Everton in the Champions League, but then this goal by Ben Goffrey, it's just world class, nothing you can do about it. But after a steady start, we somehow... Bottle qualifying automatically and finish in the playoffs, which means we'll have to play in the round of 16. There's no easy games in that, let's say that. And in the Bundesliga, Frankfurt are still there. And another surprise contender, Hoffenheim's turned up. In February, it was time for the DFB quarterfinal and we faced Bayer Leverkusen coming away 5-2 after extra time. A Valentino Barco hat-trick was the cause of it all. Luis Diaz got us to score an underweight in the 41st minute, cutting in from the left-hand side before a Victor Boniface capitalised on a mistake at the back again, making it 1-1. Vinnison in the 66th minute gave Leverkusen a 2-1 lead. At this point, we are down to 10 men. We have been down 10 men for tw- since the 22nd minute. But Barco, with a penalty in the 74th minute, sent the game into extra time. And in the first minute of injured extra time, Barco again steps up, making it 3-2. But Luis Diaz wasn't having none of this. With a great touch edge of the box and a finish that takes a slight deflection, makes it 4-2. And then in the 115th minute, Barco... Finishes off his story, his hat trick, and we go through 5 2. And in the Champions League knockout phase, we face Copenhagen. The game finishes 2 2 after Varbo getting Copenhagen a 1 0 lead before Kosterman gets us an equalizer in the 37th minute with a great finish after some good build up. We take the lead through the Kuba header, which somehow looped in, in the 49th minute. But then on the 63rd minute, Jordan Larson gets Copenhagen their equaliser and the tie finishes 2-2. But in the second leg, we were too strong and come away with a 2-1 win. A pendo with a penalty in the 6th minute, making sure we are 3-2 up on aggregate. Before an Osakinson goal in the 41st minute put the tie level again after a goalkeeping mistake. One minute later though, Pavadis getting on the end of a header and rifling the ball into the bottom corner to make sure we go through. 
Bundesliga and we are seven points clear now. Hoffenheim have dropped off, but Bayern Munich are back on the push, followed shortly behind Dortmund. It's that time again in the episode where we face Manchester City, this time in the round of 16. On the first leg, we lost 2-1. We take the score opening with Lependa after some mistake at the Man City back four in the 46th minute. But then in the 68th minute, Gardewell getting himself a goal after a mix-up of the bat line for us. It was a bit of shambles, really. And in the 79th minute, Bernardo Silva turns the tide and makes it 2-1 to Man City, giving them all full advantage into the second leg. But before the second leg, we had a massive tie in the Bundesliga against FC Bayern, coming away with a 3-0 win. A pender in the sixth minute gave us an unbelievable start. And then in the 25th minute, Luis Diaz did this. A strike into the top corner. 2 0 up, we're cruising, but then to make it even better, 75th minute, Claudio Evergi, I looked at that, made it 3 0. And our run is over in the Champions League yet again, losing 4 1 to Manchester City. Bernardo Silva opened the score for them, questionable goalkeeping. We do pull a goal back through Auburn in the 31st minute, thinking, here we go, we can do this. But Phil Foden turned up. He always turns up against us for some strange reason. No one else. In the 49th minute. In the 57th minute, he got his second. Have some work from Haaland. Getting into the box. Cutting it back. And Foden's on the edge of the six-yard box. And then Bernardo Silva thought, well, I'm having this. He'll get involved. I made it 4-1. And we're out again of the Champions League. Bundesliga, and we're nine points clear with ten games remaining. A Patrick Schrick hat trick wasn't enough to topple us after we went 4 3 against a very strong Bayer Leverkusen team. Claudio Avetri, I got butchered it again in the 13th minute, getting us the score and underway before Timo Werner. In this possible last season of RB Leipzig, making it 2-0 in the 23rd minute. But Bayer Leverkusen smelled a comeback and Schick got his first goal in the 69th minute. It's a naughty number. Four minutes later, he made it 2-2. And this kid who was unplayable at this time, that time of the game. But Newington had other ideas. In the 79th minute, he made it 3-2. With a great strike going into the bottom corner. But Bayer Leverkusen again came back and equalised and Schick got his hat-trick. But in the 90th minute, Newington with a last gasp winner. It was semi-final time in the DFB Pokal and we face FC Bayern Munich. Matthias De Litt own goal in the 35th minute gave us an unbelievable start. And then Luis Diaz in the 91st minute with an unbelievable free kick put us in the final against Freiburg. Freiburg's just been relegated. Should be easy. And we've just been crowned champions. Frankfurt's still there, but we've absolutely run away with it. Oh my God. So it's now time for the DFP Pokal final. RB Leipzig, Freiburg, the teams are ready. And we have got off to a perfect start with a penalty given to us by VAR up steps our main man Sesco surely he's going to put it in the back of the net he drives it straight down the middle and the keeper makes an unbelievable save but the highlight is still going you're thinking surely not they're not going to go down the other end and score the long kick is headed by Samakan we get out wide to Barco takes a great first touch gets down the line can he get the cross in cuts it back some great players in the box for TZ and what a save by the keeper he is going to be on one today Barco with the throw in who gives it Newington goes back into Barco gets the cross in and Pavanis is there but the offside flag is up and with a VAR consultation coming up what's it going to give no goal 
Weiberg with a long goal kick goes over the halfway line. Sesco gives it to Livermento. With his pace, he drives down that right wing. He's looking for players in the box. Gets his head up. Gets it in low. New and turn this time makes it 1-0. But, of course, there's always controversy. Another VAR check. And another goal chalked off. Second half. And Barker whips the ball in back post. And what a header. It bounces off the post and somehow it does not go in the back of the net. A full-time whistle goes and it finishes nil nil after complete dominance over Freiburg. Tell the boys, look, you've worked hard. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing and the result will come. And it's so near dead quite early on in extra time. Luis Diaz picks it up at the edge of that. Lays it off to Simakan. He looks up to Werner. Koshman gets the ball in the box, puts it in back post. Header, and it's cleared again. Another chance we hit the post. The corner, Luis Diaz picks up the ball. Barco, a little dink in. Pavanis is there. Makes it 1-0 in extra time. But it weren't done there. Freiburg with the only highlight of the whole game. And they hit the bar. But the final whistle goes. Ladies and gentlemen. We are now the DFB Bacal champions. To go alongside with our Bundesliga from last year. Our Bundesliga from this year. We have basically completed Germany. What more can I do with this RB Leipzig team? That is Germany complete. We have won the DFB Bacau in our second season. Get in. Also winning the Bundesliga for a second year in a row. Fortunately, we're knocked out in the Champions League by Manchester City at a round of 16. I thought we were unlucky, unlucky there. You know, 4 1. How many times have we got to play Man City in this career? Really? Every time so far. We seem to face them at least three times every season. Maybe more than that sometimes. Who won it in the end? Won by Manchester City in a Manchester derby. Semi finals. Both Milan's and Manchester's getting into the semi finals of the Champions League. Quarter finals. Man City beat Barcelona. Inter beat Real Madrid. PSG losing to Manchester United. 3 0 at home as well. Milan scraping against Atletico Madrid. Round 16, that's where we go out. Also, Everton go out and Arsenal go out as well. Ooh, Arsenal go out on penalties as well. That's tough, that's tough. But none of that matters. As I said, we won the DFB Bacal. Great result. 1 0 extra time as well. It had to be extra time after we absolutely battered them. Missed the penalty. Two goals disallowed for offside via a VAR. But still, that is now another trophy slapped into our trophy cabinet. That means Germany is basically done. A quick look at the Bundesliga. Winning the league by 14 clear points. 14. That's a massive, massive difference. Bayern finishing in third. Frankfurt finishing in second. Fair play to Frankfurt. Bayern having a bad season finishing in third. Dortmund finishing in fourth place. Squad-wise, let's have a look. See who done what. Most goals was a penniless 25 and 47. He did miss the last couple of games through injury. He had picked up a broken toe. Then comes Sesco with 20 and 38. Pavanes with 16 goals in 23 appearances and 7 assists. Luis Diaz in his first season, 15 goals, 11 assists in 46 appearances. Not a bad return. Keeps up. He'll be an absolute star for us. The wonder kid from Manchester City, Claudio Ecoveri. 14 goals, 7 assists from 32 matches. And he looks unbelievable. 20 years old, valued at 92 million. Manchester City have got an absolute talent on their hands there. Timo Werner getting himself 13 goals in 14 starts and 19 from the bench. Not a bad season for him. Contract is running out and he is wanted. New Wurton in his first season at the club. Done well, 11 goals, 7 assists and 27 starts. Valentin Barco, new signing, 7 goals, 16 assists and 23 appearances. A signing from Brighton. 
and he's improved as well. He looks unbelievable, 21 years old. Another boy from Argentina that they have to have a serious squad in the future. Assist-wise, Barco with 16 assists. David Ram with 13. Livermento had a good season, 12 assists, 1 goal and 27 appearances. Value at nearly 100 million on loan from Newcastle. Diaz with 11. Aslani with 10. Apeña with 10. Pretty much all shared around. Goals and assists. Good season. Good season and all. Now comes the tough part. What do we do with this club? We've won the Bundesliga. We've won the DFB Pokal. Germany is technically done. We've got nothing else we can win in Germany. We've got France, Spain and England. What is going on at the job centre? Nothing screams out to me apart from, it sounds a bit weird, the Bayern Munich job. I think if I went for the Bayern Munich job, I would have more chance of winning the Champions League than I have with Leipzig. It's a, it's a weird one. It's a, it is a weird one. But we have got an aging team. But we have got some youngsters. If I don't go for the Bayern Munich job, the other job I could only possibly go for that's available at the moment is the Marseille job. Marseille finishing sixth in Ligue 1, which means they get Europa Conference League next season. They've got a decent squad. They've got some decent players. They are rich. They might have some transfer budget as well. It's, it's a tough one to call. It really is a tough one to call. I honestly think I'm going to have to think about it. Because I honestly believe my time here at RB Leipzig is done. Now, I've enjoyed my time here. I've had two great seasons here. Bundesliga, DFB Bacal. There's a great squad there with a lot of potential. I wish them all the best, but I think I need to resign. To go to the next level, I've got France, Spain and England. I've got to win cups that. I can't be sentimental and stay here, hoping we win a Champions League with this squad when there's nothing else to play for in the country. So, with that being said, I think it's time to resign. Resign as RB Leipzig manager with immediate effect. Yes. And that is it. We are now no longer manager of RB Leipzig. Jason Mourinho is the favourite to take over. If you have enjoyed today's video, please comment down below who you think I should apply for, Marseille or FC Bayern. Also, if you haven't, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you're notified when a new video does come out. <sighs> I couldn't be sentimental then. Just couldn't be sentimental. Hope you have enjoyed today's video. And until next time, guys, I will see you very, very soon. Doodles. Jobless again.